to start off by saying this is not a product endorsement, it's not a review, it's not a criticism of any of the brands that I show. It's just a video about how I came to a solution to a problem. I was just so excited to start reloading some Hornaday FTX and some Sierra Sportsmaster and 357. I absolutely really enjoy these rounds. They are fun to shoot, a little bit expensive. These are real rounds. These are rounds that I would hunt with. And the reason I would hunt with them is because, well, first of all, the FTX has, is like similar to the critical defense in that it has the polymer tip on it, which aids in expanding and penetration. And the time proven soft nose flat point. Now this is a round that has proven itself in hunting time and time and time again. So I was very, very excited to start loading these rounds. So I'm reloading the FTX and I notice that when I seat the bullet, the polymer is being squished down into the cavity and I really don't like that. It not only, it not only looks bad, but it might be doing something to the bullet as far as starting the expansion or maybe the performance is degraded or I don't know what. And then some of them I was deforming the soft nose tip on these rounds and I really did not like that. I had to be so careful. I, it just didn't seem... I mean it's starting to mushroom, it's flattening them out and I just, I just really didn't understand what was going on. The RCBS dies come with two bullet seating punches, if you will, whatever they're called. One is for round nose and one is flat for like wad cutters. So I was using the flat wad cutter one for the Sierra bullet and I guess if I just didn't get it in there just absolutely perfect, you see how it's pushing on the lead instead of the copper? It would deform and if it didn't deform it would mushroom it out. I did not like that at all. And for the FTX I was using the round nose but it also it pushed directly on the polymer tip so I'm watching I'm watching a camera sorry and so it again it wasn't pushing on the copper so all of the force was being applied to that tip and I did not like that at all actually both of them are okay for wad cutters which is the vast majority of bullets I've loaded over the years because what you need to know is I've been I've owned these dies since like 1985 so I really haven't had a problem till now in 2013 can you believe it and I shoot mostly lead. I had some bullets, uh, round nose bullets, uh, but they weren't as, as fragile. Fragile meaning I could damage it because they're serrated on the outside, like some of the older bullets I had. Started to notice that I was, you know, mushrooming the wad cutters also. So, you know, I just, just wasn't doing well. The, the semi wad cutters, they fit perfectly. Um, some of my lighter bullets, um, my 125 grains, uh, I did notice that I was closing the cavity on some of them, which I never noticed before after all these years. So something had to be done. Well, you know, since I have a lathe, I was going to put it on the lathe and just kind of like custom make it for each one. You know, I had a couple of these from, you know, 9 millimeter and different ones. I was just going to you know kind of steal them from different die sets I had and start making them and then when I put it on the lathe I found gosh that's really complicated and difficult and I really can't get in there very well and I have to modify tooling and maybe mill it out and it's just just got really crazy so I purchased a set of Lee reloading dies and I had to buy a set because I needed the bullet seating die of course they sell this die separately which is the resizing and depriming then the powder through die that expands it your expansion die they sell that separately of course they sell powder measures separately I don't need that A shell holder I don't need that what I needed was the bullet seating die which is not sold separately so I had to buy the set 
But anyway, and the reason I went with the Lee was because the bullet seating die has a little insert on it. Well, on my lathe, I can make countless numbers of these to fit the individual bullets, you know, the shape of the conical, whatever I need, because it turns out that the outside diameter of this piece is the inside diameter of the casing of the brass. And then also with lead dies, what they do is they resize the bullet, like if it, it was a bulge in there, when it goes in and comes back out, it resizes it to the correct diameter. Now there's a taper ledge in there, but I won't be using that uh, because I'll do the factory crimp die, which I have purchased separately, uh, to do that. So what all I'll do is use this to seat the bullet. So now I'm going to make a whole bunch of these, right? Wrong. I figured out a universal solution, which I tried it out on my 44 Magnum. See how the case kind of checks the sizing. So let me show you my solution. A standard piece, which has, uh, which is uh, dished in for a round nose and then this outside rim will handle any wad cutters. So when I was making the piece I came up with the idea of putting a through hole on there. So now the soft point is not touching anything. It's actually pushing on the copper. So it's pushing the bullet down. And then also by being a through hole I don't have to worry about depth, like the polymer tip. Now this is a 44 Magnum, it's going in too far, but uh, I don't have to worry about how, how deep to set it. All I have to worry about is that the bullet is engaged. And by having it engaged right here by the lip, I'm really pushing on uh, the, the, the heavy part of the bullet. So uh, I'm really uh, happy with that it just kinda happened by chance I really didn't really design it that way just kinda figured it out so the Lee reloading die and then you can make one of these guys now I realize most people don't have a lathe so uh, you can use a drill press uh, you could probably make make some of these uh, if you wanted to make it out of plastic I have all kinds of bits and pieces of plastic uh, that I can make it out of, but I, I chose aluminum. So Anyway, so there's my solution, and you just kind of put it in here, and then you uh, set your bullet seating depth, and of course I like to set it so when it crimps, it crimps right there where the crimp ring is, and I like it to crimp in the middle of the crimp ring, and no more damaged soft tip bullets. So I hope you're able to use this information to make a better quality bullet for yourself. Here's my solution, just creating a uh, replica of the Lee factory bullet seating die pusher insert and get by giving it a through hole or making it deep to accommodate like flex tips or soft points and also on the flex tip for the 357 I need to make sure that it engages it you know down down here with with the bullet that that will really give it a good push it's worked with my 44 magnum and now I'm going to do that in 357